Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. And yes, I am still working on these rails. Uh, if you stopped by for the live stream on the weekend, uh, thanks for stopping by. It was, wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but uh, hey, at least it was a little more entertaining to, this time. And uh, if you didn't miss it, you didn't miss too, didn't miss too much. Uh, didn't basically babysat that thing for, what, six hours? It went to 10 kilometers. Uh, needless to say, it hasn't been doing the greatest with the gravity. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this is one of the reasons. Now, look at the tree. Yeah. This is my fault, because I blueprinted it wrong. I should have been over that way significantly. But the good thing, good thing is, on this angle, we're pretty good. So it's not too bad. Uh, my design should be able to handle it. But then, you never know. So what we gotta do is before we go ahead and build this elevator, and that's what we're going to do, uh, we got to get this thing off of here. It was basically a one-time use. Uh, it, in theory, it should have worked, and it would have worked if I had set it up correctly when I first started build, running it. Uh, well, my biggest mistake was the two extension pistons. I didn't link them together with the Sheridan Richard Tensor. So it started moving out of whack from the, the get-go, so it never got perfectly aligned because I had actually built it right on the grid. Uh, speaking of grid, we're uh, about six, 67,000 blocks. Uh, if you do notice a lag spike in about 10 sec after about 10 seconds, you'll see a save notice. Uh, yeah, it's been getting pretty bad. My save file, just for this one gr grid alone, which is actually technically the asteroid up there, I think is, with this, probably about 70 megs. Unbelievably huge. But anyways, so now what I gotta do is I gotta find a way to take this thing off without actually just having to hit the hit the grid. Uh, I do need a container to put everything in, in. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this. Make sure this is empty. It's not. Do I have the room for it? Barely. So let's go ahead and take that. Make sure not to hit, not to hit the rails. Uh, I did do a lag check, uh, by which I mean I. When I was filling in the rest of the inner rail, I kind of misplaced a block. The delay wasn't bad. It was about 30 seconds, so it's it's not terrible. Uh, I do know that if something does hit this, th there will be no recovery. It's just a matter of lagging until I decide to like, end the game. If you're wondering why there would be so much lag, uh, if you think about the number of blocks, it has to update the damage state, not only on the code level, but on the, the surface level. So when you're deal, dealing with that many blocks, now I don't know if you've ever seen a blueprint file, it's basically each block has about six lines of code with coordinates and the way it, these blueprints start in particular, you start with the main block which is the, the very first block I placed, uh, where's the other one here, the other one over there. Uh, when I placed that one on the asteroid, that was the, the root block, that didn't have any coordinates. And as you place add blocks to the blueprint, you're basically copy and pasting, but you're adding or subtracting from the X, Y, or Z coordinate. And it's just basically juggling numbers, and that's actually how I did this. I just copied this section here, and I pasted it, doing a, a Y negative 1, and I put it here. And then I did the same with a Y negative 10, and I put it here. So it's just copy and paste, it's just a 30 meg text file. Oh yeah, we're going to go down here and build a container. So I think I'm going to do this off camera. If something drastic happens, I'll bring you back. But i got to get that down where I'm actually going to need the parts for the elevator. And I'll show you that as soon as, as, soon as the mm, prototype, we'll call it, is out of the way. Okay, if you're wondering how, much, how many parts I actually had in that thing, uh, there you go. Uh, not counting the steel plates, that was still, I think it was 4,000 left in the, in one of the containers. So there's, there's about 12,000 plates, but 12,000 plates, 9,000 construction components, 6,000 computers, yada, yada, yada. That's how many parts I had in that thing. And surprisingly, it didn't even fill me up. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and drop all this off. I'm going to take a whole bunch of plates. And we are actually going to run back over to the other elevator. Where is it? There it is. can almost see it. Not quite. It needs to be bigger. This one we can see pretty good, though. Depending on what angle I'm on. Uh, just because it's only one block deep. And it is, I think, 
yeah, about four and a half, five k from here. Uh, if this idea d does work, I definitely want to try to get like, uh, you know, geographical transportation, sort of like high speed monorails and stuff like that. I know other people have done them, but you know, everybody has their own way of doing things and ideas and things you want to try. And right. But anyways, uh, so this is the idea here. If you didn't actually see the original build on this, wow. I noticed that too with that heavy inventory. You noticed that jetpack quite a bit. But with the original, this is the original build. So this is how I'm thinking it works. Is uh, uh, things like powered wheels and thrusters and stuff like that are all limited by code to not actually propel the vehicle more than 110 meters a second. And if you watch this, seen this before, I apologize. I'm just going for anybody who hasn't. So the rotors themselves actually turn at 30 R, uh, 30 RPM. So they turn 30 times a minute. Uh, these wheels here are actually 12 and a half meters in diameter. They are actually really, really, really big wheels. Which is about 40, about 40 meters, I figure. Now, if that's doing half a rotation a second, that's 20 meters a second per rotor. Because this rotor is being turned by this one. So if this one's turning 20 meters a 20 or 30 times a minute, that means that this entire rotor is turning 30 times a minute along with whatever's attached to it. That's not powered. If you power this, then that's turning. Wow, that's turning. So that's technically going twice the speed of this. And then so on, and so on, and so on. And roughly each one is going to work out to about 20 meters, 20 meters a second. I'm going to change my idea a little bit. One, I'm uh, going to actually put the, the tensioner on this side here. Have the bar coming out and just add a few more rotors. Because I have a 11 here and I want to go 15. And try to go 300 meters a second. That's if the rails hold and if this idea works. I, we don't see clang, but I haven't seen any of these... Uh, uh, the so-called stories yet, but I'm sure we will. Uh, and then the other idea I'm going to have, like I'm going to keep these ones where they are. I just need to, well, this one's going to go on the outside. This one's going to go on the outside just because I have to get more of those in. And the rails are already built, so I can't exactly, you know, uh, adjust the wheel spacing. And then uh, on the top, I'm basically going to mirror this section and put it up top, just keeping... This will be the same as the bottom one there, so it's just going to be a, a second set of, or a third set of, uh, more or less, guide wheels. Now, as far as the lift goes, it shouldn't be a problem, but I'm kind of worried with the the angle that thing's on. See, you can see it over here. The angle that's on, that this might not be strong enough to hold it, but hopefully with enough pressure that these should keep it on straight. Uh, when I built this too, I was worried about the the deconstruct leg, worried about building it on the grid, so I had to mess around with like link blocks and rotors and all that stuff to get things to line up. But uh, this time I'm going to build right on the grid because, you know, I can wait the 30 seconds or so if need be. Gotta love those shadows. We're going to do something with that too. Another one too, if you missed, uh, if you did miss the stream, uh, the planet now has a name. It is... Uh, I'm, it, I'm pretty sure it was Britska Chumbum Plummet. Uh, it might have been Blitzka, but uh, to honor the Blitztopian Empire, we will go with Britska. And I do have an idea for that, uh, something I was talking about too, about having something orbiting the planet that would cast a shadow on the, on the surface of the planet. But in case you're wondering why I came up with that name, because Blitzka, or was it Blitzka Chumbum Plummet is actually BCP. I don't know how he came up with that. Sounds Latin or Greek. Either way, it's got to mean something good, right? One can only dream. So, yeah. So now, to, where to start here? Oh, yeah. That was the issue I had with that one, too. We're going to actually test that right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a block. We're going to go with light armor blocks on this. No. Uh, I'm not spending that much money anymore. Or resources, I should say. Not money. Oh, God, no. Not enough gold in the universe to get that kind of money. Alright, uh, what kind of color do I want? Because I went with blue on the other one. I don't know. Uh, give me a second, let me think about this. That looks like a good color. Okay, so now, uh, I had 
I had everything written down. I think I wanted to start six blocks from here. Uh, I do want to sort of have like possibly a platform set up. I, I'm going to get this thing set up with sensors of some sort. We'll have to do uh, brake testing and uh, especially load limits. Especially I'm going to be filled right up like I am. Uh, I will need to have a few blocks on the side. I need at least six. So probably start right about here probably. This sounds good. I think there we go. Nice bigger blocks. That's gonna be there, there. Now this was the issue I had last time. And I wanna see if this is gonna be the problem now. Yes. Uh from what I've seen in the the blueprint, it's uh it's returning it's giving it some sort of almost like a floating point variable error or something as the durability so it's preventing me from actually building onto the grid that's why I had to do that so hmm I might have to do this a little differently might have to use that piston then uh, let me see if I can work something out actually let's try this differently because I know I can build underneath right that's the strange part and I'm wondering if it's got to do with because it actually because of the fact that it originated up there so let's actually go up there. How high was this? I'll go about 25 blocks from here. Let's go up. Way up. And we'll see our friend Roost. What was his name? What was it? Ro Rusty? Yeah, Ro Rusty the Rooster or something like that. Uh, friendly giant, in case you're wondering. Anyway. Okay, so we'll do that. So that's going to be the basis of the frame. So if I'm going to build, I can't build down or build up just because of this issue that I'm having. So it was going to be six blocks over. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wait, one, one two, three, four, six. Yes, six. Which should be. Hang on. They got this wrong. Okay. Let's try something different. I'm actually going to sacrifice the uh, deconstruct leg on this one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same trick I did with the the crawler. Let's use the landing landing leg. And I think that was only one two higher. Was it was it two or three higher? One, it's three, two. I can't count today. I think I should, I think I should go back to school. Oh yes, you. That is fine. You know why? Because we are going to be creating a separate grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to rotate it anyways. That's the wrong way, and I need to actually be touching the lock. There we go. So now if I fill this in, once again, construction components. Oh, fortunately, they're right here, so I don't have to go fly for two minutes to go get them. Oh, yeah, I forgot to... Get everything I need for that. Let me uh, open up the right menu here. Uh, landing gear. You think they there? It's, I was gonna say you think they have it right on their end motors. I should know these things. It's like me looking for the recipe for a lar large container. I should know this by now. But anyways, what in theory should happen is this should actually become a separate grid, so I should be able to build upwards on this once I remove that block. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in, and yes, I did find the color. Can see, call me kiss ass if you want. I don't care. So let's see how bad the lag is. And I think it was about 30 seconds last time. But in theory, this should actually allow me to build upwards now on here. I remember at one point in time this was. It was 15 kilometers down and a miss. It wasn't a misplaced block, it was my charging station it was the the cockpit and the solar panel and it took like 15 minutes for each one I basically had to wait half an hour to continue on after I charged my jetpack it was almost would have been faster to fly up to the station well is this going to be a long one 67,000 bucks yeah Expensive. I'll bring you back when it's done. Actually, that wasn't too bad. It was like a minute. 
So that is locked on here. It should be aligned with the grid. So I don't have to worry about adjusting this too much. Now let's see if my theory works. Oh. Does it really mess up the grid? I can remove. That was an auto save. And it'll. Oh yeah. Not that it matters because I know it's giving me that issue again. Well, let's try getting rid of that one and that, that one. And put it on the landing gear. A block on the landing gear, not a landing gear on the landing gear. Hmm. I wish I was waiting. I actually a way to open up my save file and actually edit it, but there isn't because uh, it's all encoded. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go back up here. I actually decided to reload an old save because I didn't want to bother having waiting the time to take those blocks out, and then I got the idea of using landing gear, and that didn't work. So, anyways, let's uh, try to get our spot again here. Let's actually go by here. So that's. 50 going about 70 or so up so so I'll make sure I have enough room I guess it doesn't really matter so yeah we'll do that we'll start building from the top I gotta make sure I build this all the the same way any other any sections where I gotta build upwards I'm putting a rotor so I'm making a second grid so that I know will actually work so anyways yeah it was two and then it was oh, Oh, sorry, one, two, there's going to be a wheel bearing here, or guide wheel. Three more blocks, and then it comes to the end. One, two, three, four. Yeah, like that. And that carries on, and then down here, it's going to go... This jetpack's over-aggressive. Either that or my keys are getting stuck. The keyboard's worn out from so many games. So it's down two, and then it goes out three. One, two, three. And these are where the wheels are going to be. And there was, uh, I believe, a seven block gap. Yes. In the wrong spot. <sighs> anyway, I'll, I'll get the framing done and bring it back. This is going to take a minute. Okay, well, it didn't really take a minute. It actually took about 20 hours because uh, I was getting late. I was... Uh, Honestly, I'm tired of looking at these orange blocks. I've just seen them so many times. But anyways, I set up a little charging station here, and it's actually parallel with the ground. And you can see how far off I was with this. So if the, I'm willing to accept the fact that this may not work, and I may have to do it, uh, I'm probably going to do it to the to the moon. And I'm going to make sure I do a proper placement with it. And what I'll do with that one is I'll actually enter the into the the earth gravity, set the block, and then fly to the moon and start from there. And that way I know for sure it's going to come straight down. But anyways, here is the the frame. I have it all set up. That's basically the same idea as before. Uh, there's going to be one set of wheels here, one set of wheels there, and then uh, it's going to be mirrored at the top. Uh, I'm probably going to keep it the same. I was thinking about having these two on the left and top, top and bottom on the right, but... I'll probably have a set here, set here, set there, set there, like I did before. So now, we're going to go ahead and choose another color. A nice fitting color for the, what we have. And I think... Uh, where? What am I looking at here? Uh, oh, it's up there. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, and I think we'll go with that one. And that's perfect. So now, we're going to go with some rotors. Uh, what I actually do need to do is I'm going to put a terminal on here. Not terminal, control panel. And that is because I gotta start naming stuff, uh, just so I know where stuff is. Uh, if any developers are actually watching this, uh, probably not, but if you are, it'd be nice to have a way to be able to actually look at, let's say, just look at a rotor and hit R, for instance, and be able to bring up the rename panel instead of having to go through this list of all these different connected grids because you can't go by color because, you know, when you do stuff like I do, you got, you're dealing with 60 different grids, so it tends to be a bit of a rainbow in there. But anyways, we're going to put this right in the middle. Uh, as soon as I find the right key to rotate, and we'll actually put it right side up. Just for the sake of it. And we'll do that. So now I'm going to start uh, the first set of rows. Of, oh, here comes an autosave. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. Yeah. 
could definitely feel it. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the idler, idler pulleys. I call them idler pulleys, but they're just basically guide wheels that are on unlocked rotors with no braking. So we're going to need that. We're going to need a 3x3 three three wheel, which uh, right there, the wheel without the suspension. All right, so we're going to go with the number 6. Well, actually, yeah, we'll keep this the blue color just because. And be, that, since it's going to be six points, I'm going to alternate it. So on the top, I'm going to have it. Trying to think. Actually, hey, let's do it this way. I have one there. There's going to be one here. And then one down here. Now, when I originally did the first one, I had issues. Uh, and on this side, I'm just going to put them on the other side. Just for the sake of it. You know, it's not going to actually go anywhere. This would actually prevent it from derailing if that was an option. But, jeez, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, originally, when I did this, because I was having to uh, try to do it with the, the link block or the merge blocks and on a rotor just to be able to actually build upwards on the grid, I had trouble getting the wheel on. Now, hopefully, because I'm actually built right onto the grid itself, that should be able to connect. So... And yeah, okay, I am definitely gonna have an issue with that then. Hmm. Because it's just slightly bigger. And that's what I was doing before, I was actually basically forcing it over. Not much as a way to actually. <sighs> Let me look at this. See, that was the thing about the other way, I had freedom, but it wasn't perfectly aligned, so I thought that was something that had to do with it. Uh, we'll try the wheel one more time. See if that's got to do with it. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, it can go either way. So I'm going to investigate this. Okay, well, I haven't really been able to think of any other way to do it. And I really don't want to be using pistons. So I want to... Well, we got no bugs. Oh, yeah, it's still connected to the grid. Hee, hee, hee. Okay. Remember that. No undos. So, th this could be painful. Actually, that wasn't too bad, considering what it's been. So, I'm going to try something different then. I'm going to be adding extra pistons, but using the, the head displacement. So, if the piston needs to be here, then the other piston's got to be here. Yeah, so, I'm going to put a block there. Now this piston here itself does not have to rotate. I'm just going to be using it to more or less push the wheel out or push the wheel closer to the rail. So I'm going to go ahead and actually finish this up just because this has to stay there. Go to the control panel. Um, that'll probably be number seven. Yes, number seven. Uh, excuse me a second. No, we'll be okay. I'll have to pause in a second here. Uh, I felt the sneeze coming on. I'll make sure you don't hear that. So I'm going to actually bring the displacement back. So what that's going to do is actually pull the rotor back into its shell. Actually, I think i got to power this thing. Uh, let's get a solar panel on here. I think I have uh, some solar cells on me somewhere. Do that. I, can probably, uh, I can't put, build a battery. I don't have any solar uh, power cells on me. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking I broke it already. Uh, let's get a good angle here. Sure. Oh, what do you know? I had enough. Alright, so where is that control panel? Actually, should have pulled back already, or did it? I'm going to bring it all the way back. So that's gonna be here. And let's bring it. That should bring it right up to Calvary. There we go. So I'll place another block, and this should not connect because it's gonna be connected to this grid. So that line. Hmm. Not very strong. Could be an issue. Oh. 
Uh, my fault. I forgot to lock that. Lock it. Hang on. Let, let me fix this. Okay, I actually did, did, did this the wrong way. There's no way to actually connect that to the rail. So I'm going to actually go ahead and just do it this way. So we're going to go... I might as well go to here, and then we'll come across here. Got to make sure I'm high enough for the rotor. Uh, it doesn't have to be filled in, so then put the rotor this way. Like so. Uh, I will have to pull that back to get that link block to connect. Which is down here. Uh, I think that's that one here. Pull back. And that should be enough to get a merge block in there. Apparently not, but you get the idea. So when I finish this block, then it connects instead of me trying to drop it on top. Plus, at the same time, too, the rotor is actually connected. So that really comes in handy. So that should be enough to get this on here. You would think anyways. Apparently not, but you get the idea. Oh, by the way, the power, the rotor does have to be complete for the di displacement not to actually function. That's why it wasn't working on me. Still won't connect though. The lengths you gotta do to get this to work. I placed that and I saw a bit of a jiggle. So I thought I'd start recording while I do this. You never know what's gonna happen when I finish up this other link block. Yeah, it seems like no matter what you do, these uh, rotors seem to be about one, just a, sh a sliver over one block tall when you pull that. Uh, the head all the way back in, so I had to actually extend four of them to make this work. And are we good? Probably not. I'm sure something broke along the way. So I'm gonna do a quick save here. Well, that didn't work as anticipated. Didn't break the game though. Didn't break the rails, that's a good sign. The world's heaviest pendulum. And this is why I save. Alright, so I decided to go with the suspension wheels instead. Uh, I had to adjust, you know, get multiple attempts at trying to get this to line up properly. When I first tried, it was actually rubbing up against the, the rail here, and I wasn't actually able to move it in and out. So I had to bring it out a block and up a block, and uh, because of where the main drive is going to be here, I can't have it underneath, so I had to build up. Unfortunately, I had to use the merge block trick on both sides of the top to get it to work. But I've got two at the bottom, two at the top. But these are just basically to keep it from shifting side to side. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work with them. I am going to actually do this before I forget, but I'm going to go ahead and group them. Uh, I'm assuming that the, where is it here? the strength has to do with the suspension. And that's the only thing I can think of. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crank the suspension up for now. Friction all the way down. And then turn cockpit control off of all of them. And then name those as guides. Save that. Okay, so now for the rest of it. And the rest of it should be fairly simple. I just will have to name everything as I go. And that's going to be in the way. Fortunately, it's still tethered there, so I'm going to do a save and take this out. If there's a disaster and I can't fix it, I'll let you know. All right, that, that didn't take that long at all. So so now we get on to the rest of the fun stuff. So what I need to do is I need to start placing rotors down. And the, the, this first set of rotors, uh, these first sets of rotors, I should say. Oh, let's get that matching color here. I got to have that, of course. Yes. Perfect. So yeah, these are going to be the, the tens tensioners. And there's going to be eight of them, so I'm going to have to label them... Uh, got mountains and we don't have mountains so I'll have to name one like one north one south two north two south because there's gonna be four sets of drive motors so we'll do this one first and I'll do one on camera to show you what I'm doing here uh, because of the fact I'm extending uh, the main drive it's gonna be easier for me because the rotors are all gonna be facing the same direction so I'm gonna go ahead and lock these two first and name them or label them so that is the north so and I'm just doing this so I can make adjustments on the fly. Alright, so those have been grouped, so this will be... Uh, actually, it really doesn't matter. Uh, 
because I don't need to worry about the names because it's just going to be north one. Or one north. And that's what we'll do. One N, just so I know. Okay, and we'll go ahead and lock those, finish them up, so we can actually see which direction we got to go. And unfortunately, you can't see which direction you're going until you finish it. So the line is at zero. Uh, this one here is going to have a bar coming down and pushing inwards. So this has to turn counterclockwise. So if I'm at zero, then I want this to go negative. And since I have this placed on the exact same side as the block, this will be a negative as well. Yes. And then what I'm going to do in the control panel is I'm going to go one, uh, let's say one north negative for the, the group. Or one north R for reverse. Okay, and then we'll get rid of this one to avoid confusion. All right, so that is that set. So I'm going to do the other seven, and I'll bring you back. Okay, that part's done. Now we got to get our, our, ten, our tensioners pinned to place. So what it's going to be is going to be one, three blocks up. One, two, three. And yeah, in case you're wondering why I can actually build up, is because this is a separate grid. And that's going to be the same from here is going down three. Now, one side is going to be the driven side, which is going to be uh, this side sticking out, and it's going to be another side, which is going to be a slave side, which is just basically going to be an unlocked rotor as a bearing. And it's going to be like that. So it's going to be like this on all sides. Then uh, let me fill this in, and we'll get some more rotors in place. I hear a client coming. Maybe. And there they are. There's actually one thing I forgot to do, and we can... Just do this now. I've got to set the limits on the actual rotors themselves. It's just gonna be basically uh, uh, minus two plus two, minus two on the lower, and plus two on the upper. Now I don't know if I can actually select multiple groups and do this. We're gonna find out right now. So lower limit is negative two, and upper limit is gonna be two. Now that should be set to all of them. Yes, it is. Uh, it doesn't matter the limits and which direction they're going because uh, we'll have to change that differently anyways. And it's basically just to keep tension on there. I have been getting so much lag. Yeah, this build's gonna it's gonna break my game. I have a feeling. But anyways, now for the drive. So we must well start at the top here. So this one we're go is gonna be the powered side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually place 15 pistons on, or 15 rotors, and go from there. And why did you flip over like that? Three, four, five, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now, don't worry about the, the sag there, because uh, there's going to be a mer link merge block on the other side that's going to pull it all together. So, first, next thing i got to do is i got to take all these incomplete rotors and make them into a group. And this will be... Uh, well, I should name this one... Hmm. We'll do drive one north. Oh, it helps if I'm actually in the box. Drive one north. Again, this is just so I understand what I'm doing here. Oh, and of course, we got to actually go ahead and lock everything. Uh, rotor lock, uh, braking torque all the way up. And these, the velocity is going to be maxed out, but I got to figure out which way we got to go. Uh, there is a reverse button, so I don't think it really matters, but you get the idea. Of course, no limits. And the only thing left to do actually is to pull them in. Because I do have to line up with that. Oh yeah, I gotta fill them in. Watch, let's watch it bounce together. Might have to get uh, this uh, this reactor on here pretty quick, especially if I gotta start moving a whole bunch of pistons like this or rotors. I don't know why I'm calling them pistons, probably because I'm using them like pistons. Because <laughs> I'm actually extending and retracting them, which I gotta admit is a great idea. And a couple more. I thought I was done. But yeah, in theory, if it doesn't break the game or 
lag me to the end of time. I should reach 300 meters a second. Okay, so let's try pulling that in. I just don't think I have enough power for that. I think that's my problem. Okay. And that did work. Okay, so let's bring that back out and try to line it up. And then it should be relatively the same with each one. Uh, it doesn't take too much to do. Let's bring it to there, see where we're at. Uh, a little bit more. Just because that block, that wheel is exactly two blocks. Now where's my displacement? I'll go, what do they got here? So negative 0 0.25, no. 0 0.25. This one centimeter over 15 rotors is enough. Okay, and now, what I'm hoping, that this big wheel is actually gonna work. Uh, because of the fact I can't actually adjust friction with this, then it might be of an issue. So this is why I have got it set up on these ones here. So I'm going to actually have to pull them out to 2 degrees, put this on here, and then bring it back in. And then at the other end, there's going to be a merge block like I did on the other one. So let me actually we can figure this out. This is 1 north. So we go 1 north. Let's see here. One north goes reverse. And so we'll go like that. Helps if I unlock them first. Okay. Moved just enough. Hopefully. Is that not enough? Do I have to go three degrees? I think so. I don't think those moved. Oh, am I having power issues? <laughs> because this, this thing can't run off one solar panel. Uh, let's look at all the rainbows. Oh, yeah. Let's, oh, okay, that's one I just placed on there. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's just a power issue. All right, well, let's get the reactor on here. So how many of you actually witnessed my mistake? Realized what I did wrong here? It didn't even occur to me until I was on my way back. I came back from the original base there to pick up some more large tubes because I realized I was going to need more for the pistons that, or the, the rotors I'm going to be using. But I have them reversed, so it's going inwards. I had one north reverse because reverse is the way to, t to tension it. So if I go back to here, one north reverse, we go ahead and reverse that. And then it pulls out. Now I should actually be able to place that wheel on there. Come on, get on there. Oh, there we go. Just like so. All right, now the other side is going to actually be pretty easy. Uh, what do I do? I put a rotor on here. Do it this way. I'm not going to complete that one yet. Actually, I will. So, yeah, it's just be that. I'm going to put a merge block. Oh. Uh, I was trying to build some stuff on the fly. I thought I had to make power supply, power cells for the reactor. Then I realized I didn't need the power cells. And I was trying to make large tubes. And, yeah, it, uh need more than one solar panel to run a, even a basic assembler. So, I just decided to hell with it. And I flew over to the other base while I could. So I had the stuff there and I had the assembler set up. What am I looking for? Where's that merge block? There it is. Uh, there. Since I don't need a solar panel anymore. So then this one is going to be... Yes, I see you wobbling there. You don't scare me. Place one there. And then what I might have to do is I might have to retract those rotors just a bit. And actually I'll retract the other one. So, let's actually finish this one up. Uh, oh, yeah. Actually, I should lock that rotor. Come here, you. I just gotta make sure I unlock it before we get going here. Uh, yeah. 
this is why I, I number stuff, lab, name stuff, why I'd like to be able to actually look at the block and just hit R and have this menu come up right here. Uh, what was I doing here? Oh yeah, we're going to pull this one all the way in. Like so. And it moved on me. Of course it did. So what I'm going to have to do is I just have to pull these ones back a little bit. And then rebuild that, put that back on. And uh, yeah, I'll bring you back when I just about finish that. Okay, that's going to that's gonna work now. So what I've done is I've actually named, number, named that BN1. Or B1N. And that's just for bearing. Because that's all that really is. So this can go back out now since I actually got that block on there. Now it's going to have to be 24 centimeters. Uh, just because I that was a little tight. Oh, that's the wrong one. Yes, this one. So I'm back to 30, so that was going to be 26. Negative 0, 26. Uh, that was a little too much. We'll go with 27. It's never good to hear a boom. Negative 0 0.27. Okay. That's a little better. Okay, we fill that in. We fill that in. And, come on. You need a little bit more, do you? Alright, so it is 26. Can I go in like half a centimeter or no? I can. Negative 0 0.265. And we have connection. At least we should. Nothing has rotated. Is this sag really that bad? Hmm. I'll bring it out just a little bit more than Yeah, it worked last time. There we go. That worked. Just right up to right up to twenty six. And then what I do from there is because this is technically pulled away, at least I think it is. Uh when I tension it, I'm not gonna have too much torque, but it looks like I might even be able to have it go back to zero. I'm not too sure, and I think that was the problem I had with the the armor blocks before, the light armor blocks. So that's one. I have seven more to go, and I will see you when they're done. Okay, I have it all finished. It didn't actually take me too long because it's relatively straightforward. Uh, I did have one. I forgot to actually lock the rotors, and it turned, so I had to manually turn it, and that was the one in the back there. But everything is connected. I got a cockpit up there. I got uh, some uranium. We're going to pop some uranium in here. Just because we're going to need some power. Because right now we're running off of the reactor way up there. Which I completely forgot about. So now what I want to do is I want to first get that out of my way. I do have every everything set up for the direction they need to go. But I want to see if it's possible to group groups. And this is... just for controlling purposes, right, like uh, all these here, can I actually make them into a group, mm, tension, and it appears so, would that be right? I gotta check that. Okay, tension there, yes. Tension there. It's picking up other ones. Hmm. Yeah, because basically I want them all to start at the same time and stop at the same time. So I think I might actually have to use a timer block for this. Uh, let's see here. Timer block, timer block, timer block. Because I think the timer block has 8 or 10 settings or places to set. Oh, come on. I should know where this is. 
I think I would. Uh, somewhere in here. I swear I should have done, done this off camera. That looks like it, but that's the jump drive. There it is. Then we'll do that. And we'll, we'll actually borrow this color. We'll put one there and one there. Okay, this one, I'll do timer block one is to actually start everything. Hop in here if I can. Okay, control panel. Yes, that's a lot of rotors. <laughs> I think I see some repeat colors in there. What's going on? Okay, actions. Okay, I can do nine. Good. So then basically what this is going to be is this is going to be... I'm going to have to have one to turn them on and off basically is what I'm going to do. Anyway, so yeah, so we got a number that's the tensions, this is the drive, and basically this is going to be reverse, actually this is going to be on off, like so, and I'm going to get this right, I'm going to do this, uh, let me do this off camera, I'll get this set up for timer blocks and we'll take it for a test run. Okay, it is time. Oh, it's not going to let me zoom in, is it? Oh, it's going to do this to me, is it? Yes, it is. Okay, fine. We're going to do this in third person, first person then. As soon as it gets me back inside. Thank you. Alright, so, um, I actually want to be out of here when I do this, just to see what's going to happen here. Uh, where is a terminal I can access? the reactor but that's not exactly the smartest idea oh well i'll just do it in here then so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the control panel i'm going to go into all the tensors here and i'm actually going to reverse thrust it on them i actually want to see if that's actually the right ones Let's see i don't know where these ones would be oh okay yeah I think so. I have no idea. Anyway, let's do that, do that. Uh, turn the torque not that high up. No, that's just stupid. We'll go 200. Reverse it and see if we've broken anything. Nothing yet. Okay. Time for the lag. And possibly a, a crashed game and maybe even my own death again. Alright, let's see what happens. Actually. Oh my god, I saved on camera. No, I don't use hotkeys. Alright, let's see what happens. About a 30 second lag. Then utter game crashing failure. Because I have absolutely no idea if this is going to work or not. Shall find out. And I have a feeling I'm a little too close to that one wheel. That suspension. Should be there. Anytime. I like to move out of the way in case something goes wrong, but kind of stuck here. Could this be a clang moment? Or do the rotors need more tension? Hmm. I guess I'll bring you back. Well, it's free. And look at that. Almost staying under its own weight. And the question is, should I try to... Should I try to get more tension on those things? Let's move it up to 300,000. 300, 
quick before it slides away. It's almost it. Go up to half a million. Uh, I think my angle does need to be different. Let me actually reload. Okay, so I've increased the angle to three degrees and uh, tor tension up to 500 million. So let's see what happens. See if this actually holds in place. Oh yeah, I'll do a cut here. That took a painfully long time for that to uh, cut. Uh, I've got everything maxed out here right now. It's just not quite enough. Uh, this one is actually pushing, but because it's really so close, it's not doing a whole lot. Now down here, because we have gravity, it is going to be an issue. Uh, as far as up there, I have no idea. Uh, as far as up there goes, we won't have any issues at all. Now the question is, is this actually going to work? Everything is technically functional and operational. And since I'm not connected to the grid, I can actually go into the person. Alright, so I have it set to 100 kilonewtons of th th torque. So let's see what happens here. It's actually going to move. I think it needs more torque. Let's have a look. Let's see what's going on here. So they are driven. Yes, they should be. Oh. They're still all locked. So basically, one is on off, two is change direction. And if I go back into the control panel, I can hear everything bouncing and banging around. Okay, why am I not getting the rotor lock? Oh. That's why, because that control panel is in there. Okay, take that off. And then the other four, I should be able to do it like that. Okay. Let's see what happens. Let's break the game. Oop, it's got the shakes. Why are they going that direction? Hmm. Adjustments are needed. Okay, let's take the drive. Do that. Let's get that control panel off. Thank you. And torque. We're going to go up to half a million. Game is not liking it whatsoever. Unless I got something locked. Oh, like those bearing wheels. When someone told me these bear these rotors were tough, I didn't think they were this tough. So I think I've got one of these locked somewhere. Or maybe it's got something to do with those wheels, and that's what I was wondering about. Uh, yeah, everything's unlocked, so let's see what guides we can do here. Not a whole lot I can do here except for turn them off. I don't think that's going to do anything. Need more power. That's the only other option. Yeah, that or this just isn't going to work with this setup. Because I'm using rotors instead of actual wheels. Well, let's crank it right up. some sort of movement, but at least it's not breaking the rails this time. I think I have stuff going backwards. Hang on. Okay, okay let's try this again. I found one that was actually going the wrong direction, so... Let's actually see if it's rotating the right direction. 
if I can get my mouse. It's not letting me change my view. Bad and good. Anyway, let's reverse direction, see what's going on here. Clang, re clang related incident, I'm assuming. Wouldn't be surprised if I had something to do with those. Give me a second here. Alright, let's try this again. Alright, well, I don't know what else to really try here. I think I'd leave something with these guides here. And it's slowly dropping. Let's pull them out to see if that is actually doing anything. No. I'm wondering if they got too much tension on these pulleys. Uh, let's go to the bearings here quickly. I realize we're running long. Uh, but for those interested as well, I'm actually planning on doing another, sh another stream tomorrow. It's going to be some something a little different. I actually plan on building a mechanical centipede. Uh, it is going to be a walker and it's going to be a fun build. We're going to head over to the desert here and and check her out, see how it goes. What was I doing here? Okay, they're not locked. Yes. So, not unless one of them is. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, this baffles me. Uh, let me poke around a little bit more and see if I can figure out what's going on here. Well, unfortunately, this is another bust by the looks of it. Uh, this. You know, there's something going on, maybe. I don't know, it's really hard to say. Maybe it does have to do with the wheels. Maybe the the game just can't quite figure it out. Oh, we, sh we shifted, did we? No, we didn't. We're actually perfectly lined up. But yeah, I don't know what's going on. It just doesn't want to turn. It's definitely getting grip, but, but for some reason, the rotor slips. And then for some reason, this one's going backwards, even though the rotor's turning that way doesn't make any sense. That's not powered. Hmm. Anyway, like I said, uh, I'm going to have to call this one here. It's been too long on this. Too many wasted resources, but we'll work on it again another time. Uh, we're going to get into some more fun, much more fun and uh, much interesting things. Uh, f as far as tomorrow goes, uh, I plan on doing a stream. Uh, you'll probably be some of you will probably be at the stream before you even see this video, but it's going to be at 11 a.m. Pacific, which will be, what was it, 6 p.m. UTC. And it's going to be here on YouTube, and that's going to be tomorrow, Saturday, May 11th. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and have fun, build a giant mechanical centipede, and if there's time left, I'll do a request or two, or three, depending on how things go. But anyways, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.